Hello and welcome to these highly questionable proceedings. What do you like today, Bo? I tell you, the Cavs are going to be a model of diligence, making sure that Kevin Love does not still have a head injury. <laughs> Vamos, Poppy. Is this a serious now? Oh, my bad. Let me shovel some of that dirt off the Cavaliers right fast, I suppose. We had done all that until they won by 30, count them 30 points, last night against the Warriors. Is it a series? Uh-uh. This isn't a series until you prove to me it's a series. This will be a series if it goes 2-2. At that point, we'll be talking about having a series. But if it goes, as most of us probably still expect, the Warriors up 3-1, we ain't got no series. I thought Golden State would win in five, and there's your loss right there. Now, I didn't expect it, and nobody expected it to be by 30 points. I feel like everyone on ESPN should be saying today, all the experts, oh, never mind, I don't know anything. Because nobody predicted what we saw last night, which is the tremendous coaching adjustment of the Cavs are going to make all their shots. J.R. Smith is going to make his shots. LeBron's going to make his shots. Kyrie Irving's going to make his shots. Worth questioning, though, is does Cleveland have some sort of an answer on the backcourt of Golden State? Not because of these three games, because of these nine that they played in the finals where the MVP never looks like the MVP even before he had any knee problems. As I told you before, the Warriors in five. No, that's not what you said. You yeah. said the Warriors in four. You said it very loudly. Actually, you were saying Warriors in three a lot of... You were saying Warriors in three and thinking it was a funny joke. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I'm just saying six. I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. You, Warriors you, in five. Yeah. Yeah. He only cares about the Warriors part, to be fair. How should Kevin Love feel about the calf winning last night without him? Look at this. He looked really happy. And I feel like if we had strapped him with a lie detector right here, he would have failed at looking this happy. Now, he's very convincing looking this happy. Don't headbutt anybody, Kevin. They kind of want you to do that so you sit out the rest of the series. Because what happened in that series last night is... LeBron played the four by accident, by circumstance, by injury. And when LeBron plays the four, bye-bye, Draymond Green. Yeah, guess what? If LeBron plays four down the line, that would also mean bye-bye, Kevin Love, right? Like one of the failures of the construction of this team is that LeBron is not going to be allowed to age into the four because they signed Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love, the deals for all that money. But I believe Kevin Love is happy that they won the game. The longer the series goes, the more likely he gets a chance to get back out there because the last place he'd want to be is out there if they were down 3-0. The only thing is, let's see how long it takes for this concussion to heal. <laughs> but, Monty, are you sure that the longer this series goes, the more the chance is that Kevin Love gets back out there? Because that would take some cantaloupes to just sit Kevin Love because you want LeBron at the four, period. We're not just going to sit him. It's going to be like, hey, Kevin, how many fingers am I holding up? Eh, wrong. It was one. No, and also write a Shakespearean play. That's part of the concussion protocol now. Alphabet backwards, 15 seconds or less. Go. Should we be questioning the Steph Curry's greatness now? I mean, this is three straight games in the NBA Finals where Steph Curry has not scored 20 points. He had all of two points in the first half of Game 3. There aren't a lot of MVPs that we allow to get away with such a performance, especially when your job primarily is to go out here and score. But this is the Steph Curry underdog MVP narrative that we rock with, where we just think it's so cool that he's gotten this far that we don't hold him to the same standard as, say, LeBron James, who we would kill for such performances through three games of an NBA Finals. What I find interesting about that, though, and he's totally right, we did treat LeBron differently, and we're more careful with Steph. But Steph is getting plenty of criticism as the MVP, and some of the criticism is, why don't we treat him more like LeBron? Because we were about how we treated LeBron. It was totally unfair the way we treated LeBron. We've never treated anybody the way we treated LeBron. So yes, are we more tolerant of Steph? Absolutely. But only because we were unbelievably cruel to LeBron. Well, LeBron deserved it. Everybody knows that. Okay, well, there's that. It didn't sound like this when I took this job. I don't know what changed. It sounded so different. <laughs> Is Clay Thompson right that Moscow screen was dirty? Clay Thompson doesn't usually say all that much, but when he talks, man, sometimes he says, we'll beat the Showtime Lakers, and sometimes he says things like this, which is rich, by the way, a team with Draymond Green on it calling anyone else dirty, a, tre a team that, that screens this way all the time. Let's look at this. I want to get a quick shot up on this possession. And a foul ball. It's a I low screen to the Oswald. thigh. Yeah. I gotta say, it looked a little bit worse this time when I saw it than previously. And man, the anguish of taking a knee to the thigh. You gotta call it something when it happens to you, right? But Thompson's argument was he'd never seen anybody set a screen on that place in the floor. And I have to say, 
you normally don't see guys setting ball screens in the paint. I don't know if it was dirty, but it sure was unexpected, and it looked like it was painful. Mozgov, though, fighting with his minutes to get the only useful thing he can do in this series when they go small. Go hurt people. The next guy he's going to hurt is Kevin Love. You watch and see. <laughs> oh, there are going to be so many screens the in the locker room. The hardest fouls in practice. The hardest fouls. <laughs> Spilling stuff around him. Mozgov, why are you trying so hard to close out? Could Von Miller really sit out this season? What a strange story here. It seemed like they'd agreed to term six years, $114 million, and then everything fell apart. Now all of a sudden we're talking about Von Miller sitting out a season. I think it's awfully unlikely, but here's why it might be interesting to you. He's only 27. If he sits out the season, then they won't be able to franchise him a year from now, and you will actually have teams bidding for his services. So if he gives up the $19 million or so he would make this year, he could get more and get it back and take a year off, come back at 28 and have teams bidding for him it isn't actually a totally ridiculous thing yeah but let's remember how long he sits is going to be primarily dependent upon how long he can afford to sit and i don't know anything about how von miller's money is structured right if he's got the money to sit then he could probably sit but guess what if he sits they're going to have to pay him. They're worried about DeMarcus Ware's back. Malik Jackson plays for the Jaguars now. That defense got it done with a ferocious pass rush and great corners. Great corners aren't that great when they don't have the ferocious pass rush, and he's the most ferocious pass rusher they have. I just have one piece of advice for Von Miller. If you take the year off, don't hang around with Johnny Football. Yeah, yeah. I man, that's good advice. Very <laughs> parental. Yeah, you're in the program already. Yeah, take it from my father. Good advice. Excellent. Coming up next on my son's TV show, we talk to Brock Lesnar. And my poor wife <laughs> took it upon herself. I shouldn't even tell this story. <laughs> it's right it's too late now. Oh, late. Brock, it's too late now. Let's go. To search for the wedding ring in dirty oh, diapers. No. Joining us at the beach today is Brock Lesnar. He's a really big dude. He'll also be returning to the UFC to fight at UFC 200. Let's get to know him a little bit. When was the last time that you were tested outside of a ring or an octagon where somebody actually went after you looking for a physical confrontation? Um, it's been many years, but I, I just had told this story not too long ago um, to one of my friends. Uh, we were at this, uh, we were at a, a function, a st they're called a street dance in the rural areas. They, they close off main street of a town and then all the, there's, there's all kinds of venue. There's, uh, you know, meals uh, cooked on the street and bars are open. And, and obviously I remember one night um, I was at a, a function and went to the bar, ordered a couple drinks, turned around went to grab my drinks and another person grabbed them. And I was like, hey man, uh, I think those were mine. And he was like, no, they're, you know, kind of oh. brushed me off. Oh, no. And I just l grabbed them from him, turned around, walked away. In the meantime, the bartender had handed him his drinks and proceeded to uh, bust, them, bust me over the head with them. <laughs> so that was a long time ago. And then what? Uh, and then things ended very quickly. <laughs> very quickly. I mean, I'd like to hear the rest of them, but I'd like to hear, what, like, what happened? I that mean, did, did, it, did that, it end quickly because it hit you over the head? Somebody went to sleep and it wasn't me, and then the cops came and then I left. <laughs> um, you were the little brother, so when did you stop getting picked on as the little brother? Uh, when I was 19, and I kicked my brother's <laughs> Hold on, that's how long it took? Like, I mean, you became a national champion wrestler after that. It wasn't until 19 that you could turn the tables? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, I had to give, I had to come, my brother came home and I had to give him a, a, an attitude adjustment when I was 19 years old. Um, Let's hear that story, though. Give us that story. <laughs> it was, it's, well, we, we, uh, we got into an argument and there was alcohol involved and my mom's uh, china cabinet and all kinds of things uh, throughout the house got broken, but we got it settled and, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> we moved on from there. You told E60 that you don't remember two years of your life because you were drinking a bottle of vodka a day and taking a lot of Vicodin. What was happening in your life that led you down that path? 
Well, I think I was, uh, that was the early years of me when I was a, a young uh, uh, performer in, in, uh, in the wrestling ring. Uh, you go through things in life such as uh, you, you become rich and you become famous and you're naive and you're young and, and to top it all off, you're traveling 360 days a year. Uh, although, you know, the, the wrestling uh, uh, is fake, but the things that go on in the ring, the ring is still very a non-forgiving uh, environment to be in. So you're dealing with uh, a lot of different uh, injuries at, at one time. Not only that, I'm not a man to be on the, on the highway. Uh, I'm not a man to be in a hotel room every night. I'm not a man to be in, a, in an airplane every day. And I didn't, it took all that for me to discover that. And to cope with all that uh, was, you know, my best friends, uh, vodka and Vicodin. I imagine the outsiders, it would be difficult to explain to them that you didn't enjoy this because there's so many cool things that came with it. Was it hard for you to talk to people about it while you were going through it? Well, I mean, when you're young, what's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's fresh and it's cool, but is it really cool to be up all night, not getting any sleep, and then getting on an airplane, getting off an airplane, trying to find a place to eat, dealing with people at the rental car service, dealing with TSA, dealing with the hotel, or dealing with the loss of your luggage, What's cool about it? <laughs> you know, there's no, anybody that's, that's a superstar or anybody that's a movie star, there is, it's very, it's not what you think it is. It's not all smoke and mirrors and it's not all glitz and glamour. It, you know, it, it's, it is hard work. It, 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 it's a full-time job. There, it's, not, it's not very glamorous. You have to go and perform every single night in front of different people that have ne haven't seen you before, and it's just it's it's like a re you're you're a hamster on a treadmill, you know. When 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 I was, and that's how I felt. And uh, I'm thankful I'm I'm able to work part time in that environment and uh, step back into the octagon. Uh, I feel very fortunate. Jim Ross tells this story of a drunken seven-hour flight across, uh, you know, traveling where you end up in a wrestling match with somebody on the plane. What details can you give us that you remember from that night? Uh, nothing any different. I mean, it was, it was full of, uh, of booze and Vicodin and, and uh, being stuck on an airplane for seven hours on an overseas trip. Uh, what else are you going to do besides maybe pass out and fall asleep? Or getting into trouble, <laughs> we did, and we did both. <laughs> There's nothing but, much else to to tell. But weren't you wrestling, actually wrestling Kurt Henning on the plane? Is that is that accurate? I believe we, yeah, we got into a scuffle on the plane. Yeah, well, I mean, it it was it's called it's called whiskey wrestling. Have you ever done it? You should try it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no. It's, 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 it sounds like it's more fun if you're always winning at whiskey yeah, wrestling. Say, it doesn't like, sound like, a, like you and Mr. Perfect doesn't sound like a fair fight in real life. <laughs> like I could imagine if somebody was writing it, it could be easy. But there's rest a big class in peace, rest there. in peace, uh, Kurt Henning. Didn't he call you a BS real wrestler? Isn't that where that all started? Because he tested the the Lesnar ego. Honestly, honestly, I was drunk. And high, I couldn't even tell you what happened. All I know is when we got off the plane, we got reprimanded, and that's it. <laughs> if you want to know the real truth. <laughs> My father's got something for you, Brock. Go ahead, Poppy. Brock, what is the most romantic thing you have ever done for your wife? Oh, the romance department. What is the most romantic thing I have done for my wife? I don't know if this is romantic or not, but it is funny. So when my son turned one years old, I took my wife on a tropical vacation and the people that were watching my son, I told my wife, we are going away, leave your wedding band at home because I don't want it to get stolen. So while we were gone, I had the people that were watching my kids take her wedding band and say that my son swallowed it. And in the meantime, I found, they found a picture of a wedding ring inside a kid's stomach on, on an x-ray via, you know, from the, from the internet. So when, they, when we got home, the story was all laid out. It was our five-year wedding anniversary, and I wanted to get my wife a, a new wedding band. And my poor wife <laughs> took it upon herself 
I shouldn't even tell this story. No, it's <laughs> right it's too late now. Oh, okay. Brock, it's too late now. Let's go. To search for the wedding ring in dirty oh, diapers. No. Yeah, I, oh. I thought that was funny. Yeah, to answer your, to answer your question, Brock. It's so far not so romantic, but it's yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And so I mean, my that's wife, a fair trade. And it, for two days, my wife searched high and low for her wedding ring. <laughs> and then we had our wedding vows renewed two days later, and I issued her a new wedding band for our five-year wedding anniversary. Now you that's romantic. Uh, hold on. You didn't that's stop romantic. when she started cracking the diapers, bro. I mean, like that wasn't time for the two, joke to be two over. Two days of searching. I mean, what do you do? What are you doing? I told her not to do it. I just said, you know what? I'll just get you a new one. All right. Okay. <laughs> See you later. You're you're a trouble. I feel like you're a trouble at home. See you later. There is only so much time left in this crazy world. I'm just crumbling herb. I'm just crumbling herb. People killing people, they don't understand. What's the mess? I'm just crumbling herb. I'm just crumbling herb. Highly questionable is broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that this is skipping work tomorrow. Do you question? You give us topics and events. We question. Do you question this man's bravery? Yeah. Chances are this is stupidity. All right, let's see it. On this wall. No, no, JPP. No. Wait, 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 wait. No. No. I mean, what do you do? What did you think was going to happen? How did you think that was going to go? I don't understand what's happening here. I mean, and like, did he pick out those red draws specifically for the occasion? And why is there a camera? That reminds me of the last time we did something like this. Go ahead and put ants in your pants up oh. there. Ants in your pants. You knew we were going to go. Which one? I knew you guys had it. I knew you guys had it right there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I got my go. I got my go. I feel like we only played that other one so that we can play that one. Time to play the game that is footloose and fancy free. See or oh, no? Tell us what's on TV. He'll be intrigued. On NBC, game five of the Stanley Cup final, Sharks and Penguins. The Penguins have been a lot of fun. A lot of overtime games, a lot of one score games. Uh, let's throw to a clip so I can stop faking. End it tonight so I can stop faking like I'm interested in this thing. Yeah, in the middle of what kind of goal, clip is this? Uh oh, what's gonna happen here? There, a kid's gonna get in the face with something. Him. Ah! Come on, man! Come on! Boom! Yeah, I mean, Dad, Dad, put down the video camera, man. Uh, Bomani, are you intrigued? That's the thing about it. I don't know how that video made the internet, because that dad, who boy, he's going to be in trouble uh, when she get off work. Uh, Poppy, Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued, but you can tell that there's only one of those two brothers that is going to be a hockey player, you know? The other one, he just happened to be standing there, you know, right. watching the action. Right. Yeah, only one of them's got a future in this game. Wow, that's harsh. And this concludes our Stanley Cup coverage. Thank God, man. <laughs> On the History Channel, Mountain Men. Mountain Men. Okay, what are they doing? They're scaling mountains, uh, living in the wilderness. What do we got? We got to put these beaver sets together. Kind of getting late. Never really trapped before, but know enough about it to give it a try. Oh, There's no. nothing to fool around with. It could really hurt oh, me no. out here. Mountain Man is all new. I mean, they got me. They got me. You got a guy falling into the ice. There's a bear trap. Boom! I'm a viewer. Bomani, are you intrigued? The title of that episode has to be Worst Case Scenario, right? Because I just can't. I mean, I don't know what you're going to do to make that worse. Can Piranha survive in water that cold? <laughs> Bobby, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. But listen, that guy looks like a rookie to me. I don't think that he can live in there. I don't think that he can survive. I mean, oh, he, he can yeah, he can handle a trap like that. Yeah, that he falls into ice water. You know, what the hell is he doing there? You know, he should come down here to Miami. <laughs> Beach, you know, we got a, a nice setup yeah, for yeah. you. None of that stuff here, big boy. Come on down here. That won't happen here. He's basically saying, I'm intrigued by watching a man die. <laughs> All you will fall into down here is a pool of addiction. 
on the Discovery Channel, Naked and Afraid. Oh, man. Like, you guys keep pushing this stuff on us, these nude people. Uh, let's go. Go ahead. Let's see what we've got here. All right. Looks like it's time. I'm kind of excited to be naked for 21 days. Get naked, baby! <laughs> Tough times don't last. Tough people do. I love my body, and being naked is not a problem. People seeing it might be a problem for them. Ready for a big blur? Ready for Honduras? Whoa. Is Honduras ready for me? I mean, I am envious of that guy and his lack of body shame. Bomani, are you intrigued? They wouldn't last very long on The Bachelor, but on this show, there's a chance he might turn himself into a star. Wait, wait till the wait, Harry Met Sally moment between him and that woman they showed at the beginning of this. Bobby, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Are you kidding me? The jungles of Honduras, you know, that's where the action is, you know? I mean, you got a lot of stuff in there that is unknown to the real world, you know? So you got two people there naked. I don't think that's going to come out of there ever. I think they're going to stay there forever. You never know. Two of them might go in. Three might come out. <laughs> that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. Are you guys ready for a big blur? A big blur. Oh, man. This is a big blur. Here we are. A big blur. Oh, here we are. No, Bobby. Please, por favor.